What's up everyone, Scott the Trout Hammer here, and today we're going to talk about targeting one of my favorite fish species to catch, really one of the best kept secrets in Oregon, smallmouth bass. There we go. Smallmouth bass fishing. <laughs> Man, you never get tired of catching these guys. So Oregon, we are mostly known for our salmon steelhead. We also have some really good surf fishing on the coast. But I mean, that's primarily what we're known for, salmon steelhead. But a lot of people don't know, we have a fantastic smallmouth bass population. Some of the rivers here, like the Kalapuli that I'm fishing right now, and the Umpqua River down in southern Oregon, they are legendary for smallmouth, especially the Umpqua. I mean, they're the apex predator in that river. You're going to catch some personal best smallmouth just about anywhere in that river. So why smallmouth right now? Well, when the weather starts getting warmer, the water starts warming up, you know, we have that, uh, we have the longer days, the sun's out longer, it increases the water temperature. Once that water temperature hits about 50 degrees, that's when the metabolism of a fish pretty much doubles overnight. The fish immediately has to eat twice as much food just to sustain its own body mass. So these early spring days, that's a really fantastic time to come out on these rivers and target some smallmouth bass. We're going to talk about different techniques to target these fish. We're going to talk about locations and different things to look for when you're out fishing to help you uh, hook up on these fish a lot easier. We're going to talk about places to look for and lures and different rigging and stuff like that. Before we get too far into it, I'm going to ask that you guys please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get this channel to grow to a thousand subscribers. I need your help to do that, so do me a favor and hit that subscription button and that little no notify bell beside it so you're going to be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. And now, let's get into some river fishing. Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's a fish. There we go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! All right, guys, check that out. So now the current's kind of loud in the spot, but I want to tell you guys why I picked the spot. Uh, smallmouth bass are hunters. They are a lot more aggressive than their largemouth brethren, and you're going to find them in places like this where they have a lot of great ambush points, particularly rocks. Smallmouth bass absolutely love rocks. They love hiding under timber like that. Anything that's going to make these pinch points where a bass can come out and hammer its prey. We're going to talk about the differences and the reason why a smallmouth bass is different from a largemouth bass later on in this video, but this is where I want to show you guys this location, why I'm fishing here, and you'll see some of the fish that I would catch out of the spot too. That's fish. On the swim bait. Alright, so the Dorp Shad got it done. So in the video I made teaching how to catch largemouth bass during the fall feed, a lot of that was focused on lakes and ponds. Lake and ponds have a completely different water system than rivers do. Rivers, the, wa the water temperature is a lot more steady. The pressure on the bass is a lot more steady than it is in a lake because there's moving water. So you get more of a year-round balanced climate and usually the rivers are the first thing to heat up in the winter or in the spring when it's starting to warm up. They're the first things to get up in temperature and also during the summer they tend to be a lot cooler so smallmouth bass are a great fish to fish for in the summer too. You can catch smallmouth bass in lakes. There's a lot of large reservoirs here in Oregon that have a really good, really healthy and large smallmouth bass population, but I'm keeping this video focused on catching smallmouth bass out of rivers. So with this video having a focus on river fishing for smallmouth bass, when you're using lures, plastics, hard plastics, anything to draw a smallmouth bass into strike, think about what they're eating. In a river system, they are most commonly eating other fish. Smaller fish, little minnows, be that, uh, hopefully they eat the pike minnows, uh, but mostly shad. So there are places in uh, the southern Oregon coastal rivers that have shad, and there's, are, and there's also places far up north on the uh, lower Willamette that have shad also. But for a lot of these areas, they're going to be eating on little crappie, other smallmouth bass, pike minnow. Uh, there are largemouth bass in the rivers. Anything about, you know, yay big. <laughs> Same rule applies, though, with uh, largemouth bass is bigger bait, 
brings a bigger bite, bigger fish. If you're fishing for smallmouth bass in areas on a river with open water, that's where you're a lot more likely to get bit on a swim bait or a plastic that mimics a fish, a little minnow, because that's what they're eating. They're out there hunting them down. If you're in an area that has a lot of uh, really sandy bed on the bottom or has rocks, anything that crawdads will hang out in, that's mostly what the smallmouth bass are going to be eating. Another fish. Jumper. It's another small mouth. Yep, there you go. Beautiful small mouth. Yeah. On the fuzzy beaver. So here's a problem in particular with Oregon, in particular with the Columbia Basin, and the Wyant River is part of the Columbia Basin, and all of its tributaries, pike minnow. We have a terrible epidemic. It is so bad. The pike minnow problem in Oregon is so bad, there's actually a bounty on them in the Portland and the Columbia River area where people can make more money than I used to make in like three years and six months of fishing dedicated like day in, day out, sunrise to sunset fishing for pike minnow. Reason being is the pike minnow, they're invasive species and they hang out in areas where salmon and steelhead are spawning and they eat up all the fry. So we're trying to get rid of all the pike minnow we can it's the only fish I would beg you to kill if you catch. They make great crab bait, and it's free bait. But that being said, a big problem you're going to find fishing for smallmouth is you're going to be fishing for smallmouth in a lot of areas that have pike minnow. Pike minnow are very indiscriminate feeders. They just want to eat everything they see. They're pigs. But the advantage you're going to have is pike minnow are a lot more opportunistic of a style of feeder than smallmouth bass are. Smallmouth bass are, like I said, a lot more willing to chase down prey. So those moving baits in the right size for a smallmouth bass, gonna get the job done for you. And as far as I know, I've never caught a pike minnow on a crawdad plastic, and I've never heard of a pike minnow getting caught in a crawdad plastic, so I mean, there you go there. So let's start talking about lure selection for smallmouth bass, and just like largemouth bass, there's a lot to get through. So a great plastic to use as a search bait if you're fishing for smallmouth bass are plastic swimmers. And that being, you know, anything that has a paddle tail, or fluke style tail or something kind of in between. But like I said, why swim baits? There are a ton of fish in the water that color, that size. And I say specifically that color because I've noticed that I've gotten the most bites on any swim bait that has sort of a silver or blue and or both speckle in the plastic. Obviously my personal favorite smallmouth plastic swimmer being the Biwa Deuce. <laughs> Yeah, man, I know it's not just for smallmouth, but smallmouth in particular, this Biwa Deuce is just like the cheap button. You know, a little billy weighted hook like that, that Biwa Deuce, smallmouth just can't resist it. Okay, so remember this, you're fishing a river. What is very synonymous with water in a river? At least, you know, it should be any river here in Oregon, most of the places you go really clean, clear, and really cold water. Those are situations where jerk baits excel. You know, great jerk bait specific patterns because they mimic the motions of the fish that are in a river are trout patterns and anything that mimics other smallmouth bass. Now I've talked about jerk baits before and how you work them. I'll just go through a real quick run through. The draw of a jerk bait is in the pause. You fish this a lot, this, a lot of the same way you fish a Senko. You give it a twitch and a pause. You get a couple more twitches and a pause. And it's on those pauses, whether it being a floating, suspending, or sinking jerkbait, any one of those, it's on that pause and that float or sink that draws a smallmouth in from a distance to strike. The retrieval cadence is going to look something like this. Twitch, pause. Twitch, twitch, pause. Twitch, 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 pause. And depending on water temperature, you want to use longer pauses with colder water, shorter pauses with warmer water. The shorter pauses because the water's warmer, you want that bait to be moving a lot more because the, the uh, smallmouth bass are a lot more actively feeding and a lot more willing to chase it down. Again, with all crank baits and all jerk baits, they work the same way. That lip determines the action of the jerk bait. The length of the lip will tell you how far it will dive. The width of the lip will tell you how large or how wide the wobble is on a jerk bait. Oh heck yeah! Holy. There it goes. Quick release. And just like that, it's gone. <laughs>
You guys should know me. I'm a jig fisherman primarily for bass, so I'm going to start talking about jigs. Jigs are some of the best safe baits to use in a river for fishing for smallmouth, and the biggest reason is because of that weed guard that you have there so you don't know how many times having that weed guard is going to save you from getting hung up in timber or rocks fishing a lot of places that smallmouth are going to be so trailers really use any trailer that you want for smallmouth bass you know you got like your little rage tails like that one of my personal favorites is using a swim jig with a with a biwa deuce or biwa divinator on there that that those biwa swim baits would just work so well as a trailer Okay, that is a fish. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I barely felt that. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice small mountain. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. About a pound and a half. Yeah. Got that feeling on the swim jig. You know, crawdads on a trailer also for a jig. And, you know, this isn't this isn't a video plugging Biwa, but they do make some of my favorite plastics. But, I mean, look look at that Biwa armor craw. And on a jig, as a trailer, that just has such a great natural crawdad profile. Something the smallmouth bass are already used to seeing in the size they're already used to eating. Here's one of the biggest things about detecting a bite when you're fishing with a crawdad, when you're fishing for smallmouth bass. So you have this crawdad sitting on the bottom, like so. If you've ever watched videos of how bass eat crawdads, they don't gulp it up on the first bite unless it's a big enough fish that knows it could eat something that small in one bite. But a lot of times what they'll do is they'll grab the crawdad by the claws and they'll swing the crawdad up in the air. So when you feel that first motion, wait, just pause. Then they come up from underneath or from behind depending on how the craw is going to be positioned so they can eat it, claws last, body first. And it's on that point where you're going to feel your bait just stop and then move. And that's when you set the hook or you're fishing with a crawdad. Worms and grubs also work amazingly for fishing for smallmouth bass. Especially, you know, little uh, little three-inch Senkos rigged wacky style. I actually keep one in my tackle box rigged up this way. So if I'm fishing for smallmouth bass and the bite is really tough, that's when I switch to that three-inch wacky rig Senko. But even five and four-inch Senkos work just well. Just remember, match the hatch. Try to match the color pattern that you notice that the fish might be feeding on. There we go. Felt it, I felt it nip like four or five times. Ah, that's a big snake. Hell yeah. Damn. Nice. This guy nipped at it for a while. That's a pretty big smallmouth. Yeah, about a pound and a half. Good job. Grubs also. Grubs work amazingly well because they mimic minnows in the size that smallmouth are eating. Again, I recommend anything that has a blue or silver flake. The plastic creatures, let's talk about those two for a little bit. You know, one of the reasons why I have so many crawdad pattern plastics in my tackle box is because I love fishing for smallmouth and crawdad plastic works. There really isn't a single color pattern that works. There really isn't a single size that works. Smallmouth bass just plain eat crawdads. <laughs> that didn't take long. On the crawdad. Tell you what, guys. Smallmouth just absolutely love crawdads. <laughs> Gotta be their favorite food. And that being whether they're Texas rigged or whether they're even wacky rigged, I actually like to Nico rig a lot of the bigger crawdads, like, you know, crawdad pattern like that, I'll Nico rig it or using it as a jig trailer. So, real quick, a plastic that is very particular for smallmouth bass, bass tubes. Big three inch, four inch tubes. Smallmouth just absolutely love these things. There's actually YouTube channels dedicated to fishing tubes for smallmouth. It's that effective of a bait. <laughs> on the tube. Nothing to write home about, but we'll count it. <laughs> Little guy taking a hook that big. I think mostly because so many ways you fish these things, they actually mimic crawdads already, you know, how they are. Something that I sometimes feel like I have to plead with people with when they go smallmouth fishing is 
bring your panfish gear. Me personally, I actually consider smallmouth bass more of a panfish than a bass. The way you fish them is so similar to a trout in the river, and they're normally the size of those uh, larger panfish anyway. The smaller bass, the larger crappie, because a lot of the lures that you're going to use for them are the lures you would use to catch those types of fish. You know, the small, the small micro chatter baits with a small trailer on there. Marabou jigs, float and fly fishing for bass is very popular for smallmouth. I know I already talked about grubs, the bigger grubs for, for bass, but even your smaller grubs, your two inch and your three inch curly tails. That's unmistakable. Yeah, I decided just to throw a grub. See what happened, and that's what it produced. Hi. Smaller crawdad jigs that you use for panfish, like bluegill and shell crackers and crappie. Mini swim baits, you know, little three inch swim baits like that. It's just so hard to go wrong with panfish gear. It's already the perfect size for a smallmouth bass. And like I said in this video, one of the things I'm trying to do is teach you to catch the smallmouth in areas where you're still going to find pike minnow. Pike minnow are pretty indiscriminate feeders, but if you stick with things like this, you're a lot more likely to catch those smallmouth. So let's talk about the biggest difference between a smallmouth bass and a largemouth bass. The biggest difference, obviously, besides the size of their mouth, is their tendencies. Largemouth bass are a lot more opportunistic hunters. They just sort of sit in one place, wait for food to come to them, and then just quickly snatch it up when it's most opportune for it, when it puts them in the least danger. Smallmouth bass are a lot more aggressive. They are hunters. They're completely willing to chase down prey, and a lot of times the way they feed is they don't just like wait for something to come by and suck it up like a largemouth does. A largemouth, its feeding style is more like a vacuum. With the smallmouth, it actually comes up and a lot of times hits the prey with its head to stun it, and then comes back around and then eats it. So a lot of times when you feel that first bump of the smallmouth bass, if it's a smallmouth bass biting, that's just a smallmouth hitting it. A lot of times if you're using like a crankbait, you'll catch smallmouth at that point because they're just like swiping at the hooks and will get caught. But most of the time when you actually catch a smallmouth bass, it's because you're using small enough that it knows it can eat in one bite. That being said though, you do find smallmouth and largemouth bass in a lot of the same areas. I mean, in the video that PK and I did fishing a slew on the Willamette, I caught a largemouth bass and he caught a smallmouth bass and we cast in the exact same spot in there right there. They're in the same areas. Bass are really a light sensitive species. Smallmouth a little bit less so than largemouth are, but they don't like direct sunlight. They're gonna be in shade, they're gonna be undercover. So anytime you see places like that, that's where you're gonna find the bass in a river. And that cover being things like rocks, timber, anything that gives a small point for a bass to hide. So when something comes by, they can come out and hit it and then swallow it up or if they're in open water, you will find smallmouth bass in open water. That's when they're a lot more willing to chase down their prey. There we go. That one's on. Smallie. So gear for smallmouth bass fishing, there really isn't a specific rod and reel setup, any sort of combination you need for smallmouth bass fishing. Like I said, it's a lot like fishing for trout. I, I bring, you know, some smaller bass rods, I bring some medium action rods, I bring some light action rods, I bring some ultralight rods when I go smallmouth bass fishing. You just need a rod and reel that operates. The only thing that I will recommend is line choice. I've already done a video talking about how to choose the correct line for the situation you're in. I'll just spill the beans here real quick. Fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is going to be your best friend in river fishing because a lot of times you have that current, it can be real swift. Fluorocarbon tends to be immune to current because it's a lot denser line. It cuts through the water column a lot easier. And with smallmouth bass anyway, you're going to be fishing the bottom. You're going to be fishing for ledges. So you want something that sinks and you want something that's going to be abrasion resistant. So that's it for river fishing for smallmouth bass. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, if you guys learned something, please leave a like on your way out. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Experienced anglers, please share your expertise. Please share your experiences fishing for smallmouth bass and rivers. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Trying to get this channel to grow to a thousand subscribers and I need your help to do that so please hit that subscribe button a little notify bell up there so you're gonna be the first to see all the great content that's gonna come from this channel thank you guys so much for watching and as always tips up tight lines and have fun fishing